Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Um, tonight, so tonight I kind of want to talk about um, how Jesus meets us where we are. Uh, I'll just go ahead and preface this by saying I'm not talking about staying where you are. Um, I'm not talking about, you know, if you're, it's okay, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, but just that Jesus can work with us no matter where we are in our faith journey, or if we're doing well, if we're struggling, if we're in sin and we need to repent and things like that, that, you know, that Jesus can meet us where we are and, and work through us. So, um, so my question for you guys is, you know, we can talk about this later on a more personal level during the discussion, but just, do you ever just feel like you're not where you should be in your faith? And do you feel like, do you ever feel disappointed in yourself? Like maybe you're letting Jesus and God down. Um, I think all of us feel that way from time to time that we're just not living up to um, just the thing, the way that, that we should be living um, as followers of Christ. But I do have some good news for us. Um, Jesus gets that. He really gets people. He is great with people. And you can see that all over the scriptures that he really knows how to, how to deal with um, people and all their, you know, all their hangups, all their sin and, and all the things that um, that they deal with. And he's dealt with people that are not perfect. And, um, before, um, in fact, his own disciples with whom he spent years building relationships and teaching, sharing life, mentoring, and doing ministry, um, on the, all those guys, um, on the night when Jesus was arrested, completely just ditched Jesus. And, um, <clears throat> I mean, before that we'll see, we'll read, the scripture um, reference, but before that, they pretty much swore up and down that they would never do such a thing. But a few hours later, they they bailed on Jesus. So, um, but Jesus, while he was filled with great grief and suffering, was praying that you know he wouldn't have to go through this, um, and he was pretty you know it was pretty sorrowful over over what he had to experience and how alone he was going to be in his suffering. He didn't, he expected it. He knew the scriptures. He knew what was going to happen. And that did not deter him for, from fulfilling his mission. Um, and not only that, that he will see that it also didn't deter him from continuing to talk to his disciples and teach them and to work with them. So um, if you want to look at Mark, um, chapter 14 verses 27 through 31 um, when he's talking to this is after um, after Judas has left to go betray him he's left the last supper um, and then um, he's left with the other disciples and he pretty much tells them what he expects to happen that night in, um, and what's going to happen to him in his death. So it says, and Jesus said to them, you will all fall away for it is written. I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you this very night before the crow rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. So they were pretty, you know, they were pretty indignant, as you see here, that I would never do that to you, Jesus, we will never leave you. And yet, of course, not much later, they, they all did. And, um, but Jesus kind of, he knew what was happening. He knew that this is what had to happen to fulfill the scriptures. Um, and that that was God's plan. However, he wasn't like, okay, guys, you're all going to leave me. And, oh, well, I guess you guys aren't really truly disciples. He doesn't, he doesn't really say that to them. He does. He says, but after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. So 
he actually, even though they fail him in this situation, he he has this expectation that after he ra he's raised from the dead, he's going to go back to them and continue um, the work that he had to do through them. So that's really, I find that really interesting. Um, so, um, so Jesus, I mean, after this event, Jesus continues teaching the disciples. He does several different um, teachings about, um, he teaches that he's the only way to the father. He teaches about the promise of the giving of the Holy spirit, the vine and the branches, how the world will hate them and using his name in prayer. So he's expecting that the disciples will continue to do his work after, um, after he leaves the earth. So it's not like he thinks this is the end. This is, this is it there. They've abandoned me. He, he just knows that that will happen. And then they'll, then they'll, you know, kind of repent from that way and turn and, and begin building the future church. So, um, in fact, he does, he prays and then he prays for the disciples and future believers in John chapter 17. So he has every expectation that even, you know, later on that the disciples are going to, um, they're his true followers and that they're going to, um, help, help future believers to, um, build his kingdom. And he's going to, they're going to do that for him. So this is, this is what Jesus prays for them in John 17, um, verses six through 26. It says, I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours, they were, and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you and that they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just, just as I am not of the world. So even though, you know, they're not perfect, and they, they leave him at this hour, they still, he still considers the disciples not of this world. They're not worldly people. They're still considered um, people of God. And um, so that's really, I just find this really interesting. Um, I, and then he says, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They're not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself so that they may be also may be sanctified in truth. So he's praying that the father would continue um, his work through them and that, you know, they would continue to show the love of the father through his love um, and that he, they would be protected from the evil one. And um, so I think that's really shows how Jesus really, um, what he really believed in about the disciples and what kind of people they were and, and what his goals were for uh, working with them. And then he goes on to pray for uh, the future believers because he believes that not only will the disciples continue his work, but that they're going to go out and make more disciples and um, build his kingdom with other believers. So in verse 20, he, he says, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you father and that are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me the glory you have given me. I have given to them that they may be one, even as we are one, I and them and you and me that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am 
to see my glory that you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. So, wow! I mean, Jesus has a big vision for what he's going to do through these through these men, and basically, he wants to show the entire world. Um, that he was the one that was sent from the father. So, I mean, not only does he expect that things are going to change, their hearts are going to change and they're going to become bolder and deepen their commitment to him. Um, after his resurrection, he, he basically is going to be changing the entire world through them. Um, and changing the course of, you know, the hit, the course of history through these, through these men. And, um, he didn't even though, so even though he knew that he they were going to desert him, he didn't give up on them. So he basically, Jesus knew what he had to work with. And, and so he made a plan to make that work and he prayed for that. And, um, he continued to work through them. So, um, the way I, I see this is that, we can have confidence that Jesus will still work through us even when we fail him. Um, I think, you know, a good way of, of thinking about this is that it's not about us doing the work, you know, doing his will through our own power. I think that's kind of what the disciples tried to do. I think they, they were like, no, I won't, you know, I won't leave you. They were, it, it's almost like they had a pride thing where they, they just thought I'm, I'm so much better than that. Like I would never do that. And the problem is they weren't really doing that in his strength. And so it's really about us, you know, having that relationship with him and being one with him and being one with each other and letting him do his work through us and not just trying to, um, you know, do it on our own strength. And so I, I would like to leave us with, um, in with, one of my favorite verses, just to kind of wrap that thought up, it's um, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, and it says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And it just seems like, um, you know, the disciples did get to that point where they they just allowed Jesus to work through them. They weren't trying to, you know, work in their own strength, but they really, you know, it seems like they changed. They, you know, we see later they do great things for the church. So they were able to um, really let, let Christ work through them. And um, so, yeah, so here's a few questions that we can think about and kind of get us um, started on discussion. I'm going to, I'm going to post them in the chat here. So if you need to, if you're a visual person, you can look at those, but I'll read those to you guys. Um, so are there times when you feel like you have failed Jesus or God? And I mean, if you say no, then I don't, I don't know if I believe you, but <laughs> Um, I think most of us have, have done that um, and, and felt like, you know, we've disappointed God or we've, we've not been living the way we were. And if so, you know, maybe you want to share with the group how you were able to get yourself back to a place of, you know, fellowship with, with God and, and Jesus and to a place where you were more strong spiritually. How did you do that? Um, if you're in that place right now where you feel like you're, you know, you failed and stuff. What, what do you think needs to happen in your relationship with God so that, you know, he can continue to work with and through you? What needs to, what needs to change? What could you, what could you do to get back to that place where you feel like you're on the right track? Um, and then the last thing we should, we could be considering is how can we better be better at meeting each other where we are the way Jesus does and help each other 
succeed as we build the kingdom together? Like what specific things could be helpful? Um, what specific things would be helpful um, for us to, su to support one another? What, what things could we do specifically to, to, that would actually be helpful? So those are some questions to think about and um, we can start on some discussion. So if you have a comment or a question or something to add, um, raise your hand and we'll and we can get started. Okay, it looks like Inti put his hand up. Um, so I have, I have struggled a lot in the past and sometimes it happens after months for not struggling. Um, and I'm not really sure why that ha has happened to me. Um, like from November to December, I was struggling emotionally and, and like feeling voids and stuff. Um, and then that went away. And then it's like, I, I blew up to like 268 pounds and then now I, <laughs> And I seem to be doing good. And then the past week, I, I, I picked out for like two and a half days. And that was, that was kind of, it just, it didn't feel right, you know, and I've been facing other things as well. Um, I feel like I'm in a better spot right now. And I'm not struggling as hard. And I think that's because um, I really believe that the more we apply Jesus Christ's commands, the, the more we grow in our relationship with Christ. And I think the, the, the focusing on the, the application or the doing or the brainstorming or the anything, I think those are the, the essential questions because it's, you know, obedience to Jesus Christ to, you know, if it, you know, instead of having him just, um, instead of having him be Lord in my life and name only, I think that is the, the biggest help for me um, is talking with people. I've been trying to engage with people uh, more on it lately. Um, I even talked to Kenny last night, which was cool. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that that is, that is where I think it would be helpful and fruitful for me. Um, because it's, it's kind of like a, a, a saying I've heard of it before said where, um, you know, if you, if you walk by the root, you will bear the fruit. And that makes a lot of sense. Cause if I want peace in my life, if I want, I can seek it, I can search for it. But it really matters. It comes down to: Do I chase the root, or am I just chasing the fruit? You know, um, and I think that's that's been like the biggest um, blessing in my life is being able to pinpoint in ways that I can, in action, apply His commands. Because a lot of His commands are involved are like: uh, Don't lust after another person. Um, don't hate against brethren. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and, but the actual doing, like, love our neighbors as ourselves, I don't know if any of you guys, how many of you guys saw that uh, Facebook post, I mean, allegiance to the King page, but uh, on Facebook, um, but, you know, it's like trying to figure out in what ways can I love my neighbor as myself, or what ways can I prevent, what, what is the action doing, like, of uh, uh, all of Jesus's commands, I, just to skip what I might say otherwise, um, all of Jesus' commands kind of boil down to relationship, except for like fasting per se, where it's, it, maybe it does, I'm sure it does, because we, you know, there's heavenly treasures involved with it in the Sermon on the Mount, and even wealth, just personal wealth. Um, that is, you know, we're supposed to consider others if we have wealth, but all of the commands is not, not only is it summed up in the two greatest commands to love, but it's all relationship. Um, now, granted, Paul, I think, talks about how we should take care of ourselves. I think he at least um, uh, hints that, that we should take care of ourselves first. Um, but I really think that, um, you know, his commandments to love and, and relationship, I think the application is uh, like uh, doing these Jesus's commands is what, um, like when I get encouraged to, it's not, it's not so much like, like I had, a, <laughs> Kenny just got here. <laughs> um, it's kind of like, I talked to him on the phone last night and he, he made me realize he was like, yeah, if we, uh, um, it, it, what makes more sense, like trying to feed, like trying to give someone all the answers on how to, how to do things in their own lives, or how about we try to show people how they can love their neighbors as themselves? How do they like to be treated? How, how, how can, you know, his commands are very relationship, it's, you know, based. And um, 
So that's that's what's helped me. Um, and even though I I have um, I don't I don't know if I, I suppose I think about some commands more than other times, um, but you know just try and engage uh, in, um, in in those things. Definitely, I like the relational aspect of that. I think staying connected really helps us keep on track. Um, Josiah. Yeah, I lost audio, so I had to restart, so I don't have the chat, but I kind of remember what it was about. Um, so there was a time where I was listening to a lot of debates about atheism um, and really started to make me doubt a lot and basically was pretty close to being agnostic and um, really just struggling, wanted to believe in God, but just couldn't really get to that point and all fellowship with God was just cut off completely um, because without faith it's it really doesn't work out <laughs> um, but just keeping the hope alive and especially asking John and, and people in our Monday prayer group to pray for me it um, God just started showing me everything he's done for me in my life and really just um, totally just gave me an extreme faith boost and, and restored me to where I was before um, and then just keeping a fellowship with him is just um, desiring to please him, desiring to learn more. Um, he's been really working with me a lot on, on being righteous and, and holy. And I don't know, it's, I guess I don't really have a super like specific, I'm kind of losing focus because my kids are really cute and also kind of loud. <laughs> but at least he's not dinosauring. Um yeah, that's all I could think of right now because I'm totally blanking out, but yeah. Okay, well, thanks for sharing that, though. I mean, it's encouraging that you've been kind of on that journey and working through that with God. And it's really cool. Okay, Jackson and Hannah. Jack? Hey, um, so I think. Uh, <clears throat> On the on the topic of sorry yeah can you hear me better when I hold this right here okay thank you so <laughs> um, I think on the topic of how we can better be moving in the right direction Zoe can you stop making noise with that please thank you um, I think probably one of the biggest most powerful things at least from my experience is um, just sharing your personal desires with other people. Um, so that can take the form of many things, but a simple way to um, share that would be, you know, sharing of goals, right? So all of us have goals one way or another, right? Like personal work, spiritual, whether it, you know, you wanna improve your marriage or you want to be more holy in this area of your life, or you wanna have this progress at work, whatever it is. Um, having those types of discussions of, of what you want in your life, that is a good thing with either another individual or another small group of people is just super empowering because it invites people to join your team, essentially, where not only do people become aware of what's going on in your life, but they have the opportunity to pray for you, to know what to pray for you when they're not around you. And then also to support you and keep you accountable because, you know, like say, <clears throat> say I'm hanging out with Kenny, just the two of us chatting. And I say, yeah, man, I'm really trying to, you know, um, change my, my habits, my routine. I want to be spending time reading scripture at 10 in the morning for at least 20 minutes every day or I wanna be working out or, or whatever it might be, right? Stuff like that for my own personal growth. If I, if I share that information with somebody that is in a sense, giving them the okay to help me achieve that, right? Because then, you know, even if you don't say, hey, can you please like check up on me that sort of thing? It still gives them the information so that just, 
out of conversation they can be like hey so how's it going with you know your your routine what do you is that is that coming along and it's that sort of stuff that helps keep us on the straight and narrow i find is is that having people in your life that know what's going on and know what you want um can help you get it right because they can support you so i think that's probably one of the most important things is just having those relational connections on a more personal level where you just know stuff about other people and they know stuff about you <laughs> definitely staying connected to other people and having accountability and just I know I just do better just being in close relationship with people I feel more encouraged and empowered to do that because I just feel more secure and and all that and just being around godly people just rubs off on you so that's some really good thoughts Jackson Uh, Laura, I, um, in at the end of your thing that you posted in the chat window, that last bullet, um, you know, the last question there, what would be some helpful things we could do to support one another? I think one of the most powerful things that we can do to support one another is to really pray a lot for one another. Um, and to relate that to the other aspect of what you're talking about. Um, when I was 20, 21 years old or so, I had really, my life was really not, um, I, I had become a Christian when I was 14, but um, I had stopped going to church when I was about 17 or 18 and and I you know I was really had nothing to do with God or anything like that I think I would if you had asked me I would have said that I was a Christian but it certainly didn't look like it and and so my brother was kind of in the same position he was he's a few years younger than I am but kind of same same sort of thing going on with him at the time and our mother decided that, you know, she, she really wanted to see us, um, you know, get right with the Lord and that sort of thing. And, and so she began to pray a lot and regularly for the two of us. And I remember having a conversation with her um, not too long after all this happened, but within, I don't know, a few weeks, maybe at the most a month, um, is when I had an ex-girlfriend show up and, and want to share some scriptures with me and just out of the blue. And so I was like, sure. And we sat down and she was sharing some Bible verses. I had never really read the Bible very much. And, and, uh, I was kind of blown away and, and so I ended up going to a, a home church with her and, and that, that sort of started me on that process. And then uh, a couple of weeks later, I was at, um, I was in college at the time. And so I, I was at home with my parents and my brother and I, I was sharing the gospel with my brother. And at first he got really angry and he stomped off. And which just seemed really weird. I didn't understand why he did that. And then a few minutes later, he came back and he said, I don't know why I got so mad. And he wanted me to share more with him. And, <laughs> um, and so then he started coming to the, that church um, as well. And, you know, it really didn't take very long. It was really only a few weeks of my mom praying for the, this just complete life altering event to occur. I met Lisa at that little church and, um, you know, and it, I, I attribute all of that to my mother's prayers. And so I think that, I, I don't think we fully grasp or appreciate how monumentally important and powerful prayer is. It, you know, it just can seem to us just to be this thing that we do. And, 
um, sort of maybe we don't think much about, maybe somebody asks us to pray for them. So we do or whatever, and not realize that it's probably the most important thing that we can do at any moment in our life. And so I, I think that for me is a, a, a thing that we can always do more of for one another and that it will have that single thing I believe will have more effect to help one another than anything else that we can do. Yeah. I think you're, you're definitely right. Like, I think that's <clears throat> something that we, a lot of times can, we say it's important, but we don't actually do it as much as we should and as and believe in it as much as we should. So really good point. Okay. Um, Dean. I agree with John on the aspect of prayer. Um, and it is very important. Um, for a long time, I was praying for everybody online. The last few days, I have not been doing that, but I need to get back to doing that. Um, I also think um, being open and honest with trustworthy people about the issues you're dealing with uh, is very important because, uh, well, number one, uh, secrecy is not a very good thing. Uh, when you're dealing with issues that could be harmful to yourself or somebody else. Um, that just promotes a continual cycle in that aspect, promotes a lot of more guilt, and it makes a lot of room for the adversary to work to uh, bring uh, destruction to your life or others. Um, I think it's important to understand with those, those people you can trust, your background, what, what your background was, what um, may have led you into certain ways of acting or thinking, um, because that's very important. We have to realize that people come from all different um, ways of life, all different issues, and that God and his son know everything about each one of us, and they still love us, and they want to help us. They call, you know, Jesus Christ gave his life. God gave his only begotten son for each one of us, for everybody, because he wanted everyone to be saved and everyone to be made whole. Sometimes that's a long process for people. Sometimes they're deep in sin or whatever, and they need to be understood. They need to be loved, and they, they need to have truth and love shared with them. Um, I do believe that community, godly, righteous, loving community is very important because we're not islands. We're never made to be islands. That's just not our makeup. We cannot live that way. People die as an island. Um, and we have to, um, just a lot of things. Um, we have to love each other. We have to pray for each other. We have to realize that people are come from di different uh, things in their life. And I'm repeating myself. So, but those things are very important. If we want to build a community, if we want to be a family, then we have to reach out to each other in love and in truth. Good thoughts, Dean. Very true. Um, Donna, you're next. 
you know, I'm thinking things through. And of course, we all have our, the way that we present things. And I agree with everyone and everything that's been said, but I'm sure I'm not alone when, at least I hope I'm not alone. Or is it my age? Here I go again. Because um, I feel a little bit like a dinosaur. However, dinosaurs are good. I'm a good dinosaur. Been around for a while. Um, you know, my need to be needed, if I can use that expression, the simplicity of it, the need to be needed, the want to be needed spiritually is a big deal with me. And what I mean by that is I need to know that I'm needed in the body of Christ, not only in the belonging sense, but the fruitfully active in some measure uh, throughout my life. And I do better when I am on the course. Um, I always say, call on me, God, to get a home run and I'll grab the bat and I'll hit it for you and I'll run the bases and I won't miss, nor will I blink. I will shoot to score and because that's how I am to think when I am ministering to someone else. I certainly do not want to miss it, but I have this need to be needed. And when that's not fulfilled, I get very bored. I have to really anchor my heart and stay in it. It's, it causes me to struggle more. It causes me to drift. Um, and I think this is just a real common need i think everybody the way i say it may be kind of old-fashioned maybe somebody can plug me into um some phraseology you know that uh, is more up to date but the need to be needed is fierce in me and it really motivates me to do more than i can and i'm on task all the time so for me it's a struggle if I don't get to minister, if I don't, and I could pray all day long. I could be in prayer for everybody all day long. It's, and, and that's a good thing. And I'm mindful of that, but that's not the same as when you're called upon to speak a word or somebody asks you, can you really come alongside me and pray? Or I have a migrant or I have an issue in counseling, or can you just be a shoulder for me to cry on for a minute? And I'll tell you what, my greatest joy the thing that brings me such joy and creativity is ministering to other people. And I can, just the mixed emotions that I have in doing that, it's the greatest joy I'll ever know in my life. The greatest that I've ever felt that exceeding joy that comes from that spiritual thing that I'm doing. There's nothing like it in the world to me, nothing. And I've defined it for myself. And so I don't have any other great, you know, my greatest joy is to come alongside someone and be able to really um, get it um, and help them to get it together or do what the Lord wants me to do in that moment of time and show up for people. That's my thing. That's what I aspire to, even though I get to do that less and less. And I think it's circumstances. It's my age. It's circumstances. I'm not working in the workforce like I used to. I had many opportunities when you're out there plugged into the workforce with my coworkers and just, you know, getting about, you know, in the world. And now that I'm, you know, um, you know, of age, you know, I'm more sedentary I'm more at home and I'm not as content so I cry more <laughs> not out of depression but you know that longing to be needed in me still even though I'm older and I, I don't think I'm wearing anybody I think anybody that you know is in ministry it's fine when you're young you never think about it and then when you get older and you're you get it you're like okay you know god still has need of, of of me but you know i really lately i've been taken to praying for young people younger people to do the work of the ministry you know i accept the things i cannot do at this time and i think that that is a, a well said you know there's some things maybe i won't do again but i stay in there and i know i'm kind of long-winded because i'm trying to share an answer, a real legitimate answer, like transparency here, you know, that would really answer these questions, uh, uh, you know, posed for, 
for me. And um, what people can do for me is just keep on being, you know, I, I love friendships. I love people praying for me. And every now and then, you know, I love the Zooms where we can get more personal with one another. And, you know, that just makes me feel like I have friends in the body of Christ. And it's more of the face-to-face thing with me. It's that connectedness, you know, that we all long for. I'm not so different than anybody else here. So, um, well, that's what I just wanted to share, Laura. Oh, thanks, Donna. Definitely can relate to a lot of that. And I think, you know, I think everybody has that desire to, you know, it gives you a sense of purpose. So, yeah. Um, to, for you to, to do things for others. That's what Jesus calls us to do is to serve other people. And that's, that's your way of doing that. So I can see how it would be hard if you're not being, you know, able to do that, um, at some point or other. So just continuing what you can do there, I think, you know, Laura, you also, you also put something down here and I thought about, it, I hesitated, you know, there was a time in my life, I was a Christian and I got very ill and I bombed. I mean, it took about five years for me to drop, but this constant struggle with my body and I had problems with church people. And, you know, I was in these churches that, you know, if you're not healed, then we're, we don't want you. And they actually asked me to leave. And the, the in, it, you know, what, <laughs> you know, the devil's in the details sometimes, you know, and he'll use those things against you. And I remember what I call bombing where I really felt like I could not be a believer anymore. And I left the church because I was terribly hurt by the way that they conducted themselves. And I'm thinking, you know, and I doubted the entirety of Christianity because of the behavior of people like, you know, well, if you're sick, you know, if you don't believe, then get out. I'm like, what? Jesus was all about the sick. You know, nobody promised me a rose garden or perfect healing. And I knew that, but I'm still human. And I remember feeling like, Lord, we are just so phony on earth, you know, uh, we're just, you know, a bunch of hypocrites. And I really started to have some extreme thoughts, almost atheistic. And thank you, Jesus, it didn't happen for me. I didn't fall so away from the faith that I dismissed Jesus. And I got, um, you know, I got... Um, deeper into the dissatisfaction about being a believer in this church. never dawned on me change churches honey i mean it's just, if they don't want you in this fellowship go to another one it never dawned on me that that would be the answer but that was the answer and if that church starts treating you weird find another one you know that you can minister in. don't just stand there and put up with it but i didn't know this at the time i learned through the suffering that i went through uh, that, you know, Christians aren't perfect, but here's the beauty of it. As long as I kept coming back to the Lord, as hurt as I was, as screwed up as I was, as angry as I was, the Lord, Laura, you said it, he will work with you where you're at. The Lord continued to work with me and bought me all the way out of that, out of the depression, out of the anger into therapeutic settings with other Christians and to the point that he had me all the way healed emotionally. He never let go of me because I never let go of him. And that's why I believe continuing in the faith today. I believe that structure today is what held me together. And so that was a real breaking point in my life. And what helped me was the Lord himself and my willingness to stay in there. And then I met some real great believers when I came out to the Midwest um, from Arizona. I met some real down earth believers and they wouldn't let go of me for a dear life. They'd be knocking on my door and I'd be like, go away. I was getting just the opposite. So it's like, no, we're not going away. We're going to stand here with a plant in our hands until you open your door. It was annoying, but that really touched my heart that they would not give up on me. So I was getting the opposite, but I had to come Midwest, you know, to get that. And, um, you know, so, but what a wonderful story, you know, what a wonderful testimony of almost losing your faith because the circumstances, it wasn't anything God was doing and where my mind was going. So no man is an Island. We definitely need one another. 
And I'm so grateful for those people that bought those plants and wouldn't leave my door. They wouldn't <laughs> leave me alone. I was, they were always, I'm like, leave me alone. No, we're not gonna. And yeah. it, it's a testimony of, you know, not really losing your faith. And the, I'll tell you, it's changed my life. It's just all that pain and all that the Lord even did for me kept working with me because I wanted him to. Now I look at that and I have such great joy that I made it through that dark tunnel of doubt and turmoil. And I'm, I'm sure the devil was having a heyday too over there trying to get me to you know, quit and give up. But, uh, you know, I never did. And here I am, you know, so you can come through turmoil, you can come through sorrow and pain. And on the other end, there is joy because the Lord brought you through and you know it, you know? Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that, Donna. It's very encouraging. But that's how Jesus worked through you. Amen. Okay, Edgardo, you're up. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, one of the difficult things to do, one of the difficult things to do when you fail God is to come back. Really, that's really a very, very difficult thing to do. But there's always a thing that is a way that uh, you can come back to God by evaluating yourself and by asking why you did that and uh, by admitting that you really made a mistake before him uh, i remember one verse No, I think are you froze up. So you can come. Maybe he'll come back in a minute. We can let him can try again in a minute. Um oh, he just dropped off. Okay. Um let's go to Ray. Hi, this is Christina. Um, oh, no. I'm just sitting off to the side with my dad. So um, I I thought this is a really wonderful uh, topic and sharing Laura and and how uh, how how God um, he he can still work in us to will and to do of His good pleasure um, in every every uh, or wherever we are in life and how. Sometimes we go through um, huge life changes that even at times may seem so overwhelming that you're like, you know, how, 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 how could God work in me? <laughs> when, um, but yet he still, he still does and he still can. And, and something that's helped me is to, is looking through scripture and seeing how, how God, um, he calls people out and to serve him who, who aren't perfect. And I think this has kind of been coming up as everyone's been talking and sharing, but, but seeing how, how um, even sometimes a person who they, what they feel is their weakness, um, God actually calls them to, to like that that's the avenue that they're going to serve him and and that they're them serving him like like moses having a speech impediment him being a prophet for god is even a greater testimony that it really wasn't about his ability um and then how god provided aaron to to help him and assist him in serving god and it just really can even glorify God greater. And, um, and so I would just encourage everyone not to, that if God calls you to do something that you think, oh no, I can't do that. That's, that's not my strength, that's my weakness. Not to shy away from it because 
God could use that to to really give him the greatest glory. Because because it's really coming from him, not about us. Yeah. That that was all. <laughs> That's a really good thought. I I like that a lot. Just thinking about God wants to he wants to get the glory for it and he's going to do it through you it's not it's not about your abilities so that's really cool to think about um hey uh phyllis and steve you're next okay um uh, several things that i see here and uh what everybody has said is 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 really really very helpful and very good. One of the things I see here that Jesus prayed for himself. He prayed for his disciples, his inner circle, and he also prayed for the believers to come that would be coming into the kingdom. Also, what he was doing here, he was teaching them some kingdom principles. The one is that there's going to there's two worlds here, the world, um, I guess I would say the worldly world and the world of, uh, um, of God. And then there's a, a conflict. And this conflict is uh, when the kingdom principles conflict with the worldly principles. There's two worlds that's colliding here. The one that Jesus came to introduce when he said he came to preach the kingdom. Every time he preached the kingdom, every parable is a principle that we need to hold on to. And every time one of these principles are defined, you will find that Satan is coming to try to snatch this away from us. And the more that we can put our kingdom principles together, as loving one another, those principles become the uh, full package of what the kingdom is trying to offer us. And the more that we can get this under, under our belt, the better and the more stable that we can walk. Also with the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes, then we are being more bolder to go out and share this with the world. Yeah, very good point, Steve. I was thinking about the Holy Spirit too because Jesus did teach them about that. And, and I think that's a pretty important component of, of our faith is having the Holy Spirit and being able to um, have the power to, to do a lot of these things that, you know, to move the kingdom. So it's really awesome. Uh, that's part of uh, the promise. Uh, that Jesus was alluding to when he would preach the kingdom. And uh, uh, and we were promised that we would be endued with power from on high. Mm -hmm. All of that's contained within the kingdom. And uh, I think one of the things that uh, we're talking about prayer and the things we're learning, the things that are contained within the kingdom it's actually changing how I think about everything. Um, I thought I understood it, but now that I'm looking at things more closely, it's just changing how I think. My ideology and, you know, the world may be telling me one thing, the adversary may be telling me something else, but what are my promises within the kingdom of God? What do I look like him? Or I mean, what should I look like to him? That's what I want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I think all of us, you know, we want to um, be able to touch people. And But, you know, I think we have had one big thing that maybe we've all don't realize we've had for people. And that's influence. Uh, it's a big thing when it comes to influence. So because of that, one of my prayers is that he opens my eyes so I can see and my ears so I can hear 
and I want to be able to understand. I'm praying more and more for understanding and, and how to meet people where they are and connect with them so that they want to know more. I, I think that's where as Christians, sometimes um, we, we miss it because religion can come through and that tends to turn people off. But um, Jesus, he didn't come here proclaiming a religion. Kingdom of God is not a religion. Um, so I, I feel like in so many ways, I'm just starting, not all over. The pieces have been, it's almost like the pieces have been that I've been getting them. But all of a sudden, it's like, it's just taking on a whole new life form. And I want to be able to apply them. As NT was saying, application, you know, as long as I'm just looking at it and I can't really apply it, then it's somebody else's. It could be total truth, but it's somebody else's truth. But once I get that understanding, then it becomes mine. And, uh, and I really want the understanding. thoughts Phyllis thanks for sharing Edgardo you ready to share I hope your internet stays good for a little bit so we can hear from you oh yes uh, <laughs> I have a problem with my connection I'm sorry about that. okay yeah C can you hear me now mm -hmm. can, can you hear me I can hear you hello we can hear you. Can you hear us? No. That's not good. No, sounds like we lost him again. Oh, oh darn. Hopefully he'll come back. We can hear from him. Um, it's like Richard. Put his hand up. Go ahead. Yes. yes. So uh, I actually have a question for you. Uh, don't worry, it's just a follow-up okay. question. So, okay. So uh, when you, so when you said, have you ever felt like you have ever displeased God or Jesus? Can you elaborate or elucidate a little bit on what you mean by displeased? Like, because ah. I, I asked because like sometimes. Um, you know, it's just like commonly said, like, usually if people uh, grow up in broken homes or things like that, they, they tend to view God in light of their their earthly father. And so like something that may have been displeasing to their earthly father uh, mm -hmm. is not necessarily displeasing to God. Um, uh, but the biblical example, uh, I mean, I, I'm assuming you mean like sin or something like that. Um, is that correct? Sinning or just kind of disappointing God, like not maybe just not doing things as well as you should, you know, how we all go through seasons where we, we may feel like I'm not doing enough or doing good enough. You know what I mean? Which that can uh, also be your own standard too. So I, I, I kind yeah. of get your point there, but yeah, I mean, I think there are times when we do kind of fail Jesus, kind of like the disciples, we kind of bail on them and don't do the things that we're supposed to um that's, yeah, that's kind of, the kind of thing i'm talking about mm -hmm. yeah kind of okay. like uh if you find yourself like not praying as much as maybe you were before like you maybe or like reading the bible as consistently you know because like sometimes mm -hmm. you know sometimes people can have a busy day or whatever and then just like oh man i forgot to to read read my bible today or something like that um and then you just like quick do it uh i guess if that's what you mean um yeah i mean uh so uh i know i know like for me um well some, something that's that's interesting that's that um maybe i could like maybe i can kind of answer both questions at once um like how have I, how have I displeased God, uh, or his son? Um, but then also meeting someone else is, um, that 
I think I think sometimes we forget that we are emotional. We are emotional creatures that, um, you know, we, sometimes we think like obedience is just robust and like we're, we're robots and we're just supposed to we're pro we're supposed to if we're really filled with the spirit, we're, we're programmed to, uh, you know, just yes, Lord Jesus. Yes. And then just just do it, you know, and with without flaw, because that's, you know, but um, but yeah, we do have we do wrestle against things uh, of this world and that it's uh, like like for me sometimes like like me I'm uh, my personality I'm like a perfectionist so um you know if I if I make a mistake sometimes I'll forget the the places in scripture where you know it, it does say we have an advocate with the father and not that like obviously I'm purposely trying to displease God but that you know, I do have a savior that has borne my infirmities and, you know, uh, obviously he sees that I'm striving on a daily basis to, uh, to live for him and to be allegiant. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, a scripture that comes to my mind, just to like tie it all together it, in Galatians five, you know, uh, in, well, in Galatians five, it, it lists this, this it has this like list of you know, fruits of the flesh and then fruits of the spirit. Right. And so, but then in, going into chapter six, it says, um, brethren, even if, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual restore such an one in a spirit of gentleness, uh, each one looking to yourself so that you will not be tempted. So it's like, yeah, if somebody's struggling or if somebody, if somebody's like at a, at a low point in their life, um, for me, I, j I try to like, you know, look at, I, I look at myself first, like, you know, uh, like if, if I, if I want somebody to be merciful to me, I want to consider myself first. Um, I, I would want somebody or yeah, I would want somebody to show mercy to me. So I, I would want to reciprocate that to someone else. And then it says, in verse two, bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. And then verse three, if anyone thinks he is something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. And so just kind of remembering, I guess, where, I, where God has brought me from to, to really uh, just remember kind of, okay, yeah, I was there at that point, just, and then it will help me to sympathize with them better to lift them up out of that place. Yeah, those are some, some good points and um, just keeping that in mind when we're when we're trying to meet each other where we are and, and, and have grace for each other. And um, you're also saying, you know, being a perfectionist, having some grace for yourself that you, you know, mm -hmm. oftentimes that can be hard. So I think that's some good, good thoughts. Um, Laura, in, in T had put it in the chat that he had a question oh, for me. That's right. I'm sorry, NT. I, I meant to respond to that. And I think, um, did you want to ask John that in here? Did you? Yeah, I, I, I kind of forgot how I wanted to structure the question. It had to do with prayer. Um, oh, I remember now. So, um, you know, I think, I think prayer is super huge. Um, I want to be able to get to a place where even, even though I'm kind of isolated here in this, uh, where I am uh, located, you know, it's, I, I want to be able to have, it's, it's harder to be praying for people um, sometimes because it's not like I'm immediately in front of you guys. You know, sometimes uh, like some of you have family, some of you have friends you can go see um, and maybe pray with. And I was just trying to figure out like, would you have any tips on that? And then I think Ray actually had a really good point um, uh, on, the, on another note where prayer, if we had like a prayer list online, like on the Allegiance to the King or some other kind of login or somewhere, if we had a list of prayers or somewhere we can update our own need for prayer, I think not only would that make, um, I think that would make it feel like, so it's not so um, uh, deep, not depersonalized, but like, it's just not so distant. And also I think it would, we'd be collectively praying the same things, you know? 
I don't think I'd feel so distant. I think we would be praying over the same things. I just think that'd be really, I think Ray, I, I really, I really uh, grooved with what Ray said. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I saw Ray's um, comment and I thought, you know, we used to have, it still exists. Um, you know, when, when we were, when our church was part of Spirit and Truth Fellowship, we had a, a messenger group called Virtual Fellowship Prayer Group, and, and that group still exists. Um, uh, but, uh, and it, it was the messenger group that we, we would use for prayer requests. But the problem with that is because it's like this messenger feed, you know, if you put in a prayer request and then there's a big long, you know, back and forth about some other prayer request, your prayer request is probably going to get lost, right? And people aren't going to see it. And it, it, it was okay, but it wasn't a great format for, for online, you know, prayer request stuff. So, so as soon as Ray said it, I was like, why have I not looked for a tool that we can use as a church to do that, right? So I found it, it's called Echo. And I, uh, um, I'm gonna play around with it and see, you know, kind of how it works. But um, basically it will allow us to create a, um, uh, a prayer, like you can have your own prayer list in it. So it, you know, works on your phone or a tablet and you you have your own prayer list on there, but then you can also have your church can create a feed that is um, a, a prayer request feed going out to anybody who's following that feed. And it'll send you when a new prayer request comes up, you can have it notifying you if you want that kind of thing, as well as you can have like groups where like, if you have like a small group or something and you want that small group to have a joint prayer list, you can do that as well. Um, it actually looks, looks really good. It says like 4.8 stars with 17,000 reviews. Um, it looks perfect for Ray's idea. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll keep you posted on that as I mess around with it. Awesome, yeah, because I, I don't wanna feel like I'm distant because like like in the previous report earlier, I was just like you know I I love that we can have that this is available that we can meet together online like this. So it's just you know, um, especially just because you know just because of that you know I do uh, I do pray for people in my immediate you know and people here too. But um, I don't have many uh, Christians I can really come and fellowship with uh, where I live. So well, from what I can tell, it will do exactly what you were just asking, which is for. what is to be better connected from a prayer standpoint of knowing what other people need you to be praying for. So it'll, you know, make it, will be, create kind of a group prayer list. Right, so like you could share that you have, like, um, uh, uh, like Phyllis and Steve, you know, they've asked for prayer for Fidelina and Tank uh, a few times now. So if they put that into the group's prayer list, then everybody else in the group can see that uh, um, that prayer request and and be reminded to pray for, I have for that. On my prayer list. I wrote it in. Yeah. So you know, just so we can we can have a joint online prayer list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's going to make it things easier. Thank you, John. So it says Sounds it awesome. I thought we already had. <laughs> oh, two, I thought we already had a prayer set. You know. Okay. A messenger group. That's just that the messenger group and yeah, and I don't have an iPhone or a, 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 any of those fancy gadgets. All I have is an internet, so I'd probably get left out in the breeze. You'll have to just let me know what to pray for. By mouth. Right, we'll, we'll figure that out. That's all I got. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording, so then we can continue to discuss. A click. Clint just sent us a little side note here. He's in Alaska walking his dog, so he can't.